Good evening, Sri Adi Godrej, President, Confederation of Indian Industry, Sri Ajay Sridham, Vice President, Confederation of Indian Industry, Chandrajit Banerjee, Director General, Confederation of Indian Industries, distinguished members, office bearers, past presidents of CII, captains of industry coming from almost every part of the country. At the very beginning, I would like to express my deep gratitude to all of you and if in one word I am asked to express my sentiments at this wonderful evening function and in presence of such a distinguished audience I would simply say, I am overwhelmed. I know my relationship with this great organization, and particularly more intimate relationship from the days Indian economic reforms which is popularly known as liberalization of Indian economy since 1991. When I look around the faces around this hall, I find many of the faces which represent sometimes the second generation, the third generation with which I had the privilege of working over all these years. Of course, it has the other side of the picture that perhaps I have become an antique piece <laughs> in the, <laughs> and almost a permanent fixture <laughs> in the theater of Indian economic activities. At the same time, my experiences over the four decades, being actively engaged in Indian politics, having the opportunity of looking at the transformation of this great country through different phases, from extremely controlled regime to the gradual relaxations and thereafter to the liberalization. I also had the privilege of watching the extreme difficult situations in different phases of our economic development. High rate of inflation, slow growth, high current account deficit, high fiscal deficit, very high almost, extracting rate of taxations, and how Indian economy, Indian system has responded to those problems and ultimately we have been able to overcome those problems, not by external aid, but through our own efforts and own efforts collectively together, Indian entrepreneurs, Indian policymakers, Indian workers, Indian farmers, and over and above the new dynamic younger generation. That's why even 
in my last speech in a debate in Lok Sabha. I did not know at that point of time, it was middle of May. I did not contemplate that a day will come when perhaps my that speech will be considered as the last or one of the last speech in Lok Sabha because I will be debarred from entering into that premises except the central hall while addressing the joint session of parliament. But I told, I reminded my colleagues in the parliament that you may call me incorrigible optimist. Yes, we are in difficult situation. We are in the low growth syndrome. Rate of inflation is high. Current account deficit is a matter of grave concern. Along with that, huge fiscal deficit pose very serious challenges to the policy makers and administrators. But I do not lose heart because when I look at the young men and women with optimism, carrying no baggage, with the indomitable spirit, and with the objective, whole world belongs to us. We are nothing to be scared. Yes, we can conquer. We will conquer. We will overcome all the difficulties. <laughs> Only the older generation, those who we are still occupying the space, perhaps some of us should vacate the space for the younger people to ensure that they can give much more. So far CII is concerned, as I mentioned to you, my memories and association with CII is very long. I remember sometimes it has happened. I do not know exactly, I do not remember right now exactly in which year. But I was coming from abroad and my plane was a little late. <coughs> Dr. Torundas was then DG. He being little impatient thought what would happen, went straight to the airport to bring me <laughs> And I from, straight from airport I came and I could address and have interaction uh, with, I think it was an annual function of CIA or things like that. And I could, I do not know whether Mr. Vargo was the president, <laughs> perhaps he was in that particular year. And I want to point out that I always considered, valued, the contribution of this organization and its positive approach towards India's development story. That instilled confidence in me and my own optimism was rekindled. Many initiatives you have taken I am fully aware of it. Particularly, I like to, I would like to mention and I would like to comment the Green De Initiative which you have taken and the number of, I think, 1.20 billion square feet of green buildings have been constructed so far under the ages of CII. And here comes the initiatives, imaginative approach of CII. I remember I was not then in the office. Process of globalization began in the 80s. It was perhaps in late 90s. I addressed one of your sessions. You had the 
rich tradition of inviting not merely the officials who interact with the leaders of the industry and commerce under your organizations, but also the leaders of various political parties, leaders of various political outfits who are in opposition. In one such interaction, I was highly impressed by a study conducted by a research group of CII, how the globalization had impact, adverse impact. A well-developed study in 40 least developed countries, how their GDP came down, how their balance of payment crisis accentuated, how their international debt multiplied since the beginning of globalization, process of globalization in 80s. I think perhaps it was a period of 85 to 95. And then the conclusions, what lessons we can draw from those developments. And I'm happy to share, we have drawn the correct lessons and subsequently the previous government which were immediately before us and thereafter when we came, we followed the corrective courses and we did not fall in the pitfalls which were noticed in that process of globalization. Yes, I'm fully aware when I am addressing you in a different capacity, where I have one advantage and one great disadvantage. Advantage is I can speak freely I, in the form of advice. <laughs> but disadvantage is I cannot implement what I speak and what I believe should be done. Because my office, Indian Constitution, very correctly pointed out, and as I am born optimist about the progress and development of Indian economy, I am equally an ardent supporter of the transformation mechanism, socio-political economic transformation mechanism 